Now that former President Donald Trump has pleaded not guilty to a 34-count felony indictment of falsifying business records, the stage is set for a lengthy discovery process and the first-ever criminal trial of an American president. A key player in the case is Trump's former lawyer and self-described fixer, Michael Cohen, whose name appears 11 times in the 16-page indictment. Cohen already served time, in part for campaign finance violations involving alleged hush money payments to adult film actress Stormy Daniels uh, about an affair she said she had with then-candidate Donald Trump. Trump denies the affair ever happened. Cohen and now the Manhattan District Attorney's Office say the payments were made at Donald Trump's direction. Meanwhile, supporters of the former president insist that Cohen cannot be trusted. Well, Michael Cohen joins me now. He is the author of the book Revenge, How Donald Trump Weaponized the U.S. Department of Justice Against His Critics, and the host of the Mea Copa podcast, Michael Cohen. It is good to see you on the screen, sir. Um, it How are seems, you? Well, happy I'm, holidays to you and all to your viewers. Happy holidays to you. So, look, this happened on Tuesday. It seems so long ago. Um, but was there anything in the indictment or even the statement of facts that you previously didn't know when it uh, became public? No, I mean, I was, um, I was pretty sure that the topics that I was questioned on by the grand jury, um, as well as by the prosecutors before the grand jury, were um, identified in those statement of facts. So I um, read thoroughly the transcript of Donald Trump's arraignment. And during that arraignment, the judge instructed, uh, quote unquote, both sides of the case to monitor their rhetoric. Now, I want to be very clear that your words, um, frankly, no one else's, no one's words from the district attorney's office or any of the, 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 the witnesses that we know the names of have had any of the rhetoric anywhere near or anything like Donald Trump. But the judge didn't make that point, and the DA's office basically said in the uh, arraignment that, that, you know, they try to do what they can, but they basically can't keep people from going out and, and talking. So I, I'm wondering, has the DA's office said anything to you about your media appearances? No. Um, we did have, you know, a discussion early on about my media appearances, and as I stated to them, there will be nothing in any of these interviews or any of my conversations with any form of media that would disclose any of the questions, any of the topics, any of the answers uh, that I had provided to the district attorney's uh, investigators or to the grand jury. So I don't believe that there's anything that I'm providing that at least has not been disclosed uh, by the media so far. So um, then, Michael Cohen, what do you say to your critics that say uh, your incessant media appearances are damaging to D.A. Bragg's case? Because they have no idea what they're talking about. It's merely to defend Donald Trump. There is a whole slew of individuals. Why? I still to this day can't figure it out, despite the 35,000 plus lies told by the former president. They want to turn around and they want to prevent me from being uh, a potential witness to be used by the district attorney uh, in the future when the case ultimately goes to trial. So they will try to muddy up my name. They will come after me, make claims that I'm unreliable, that my credibility is an issue. They don't finish the sentence, Simone, something we actually spoke about when I was going and I saw you uh, on Reval's show, uh, Politic Nation. One of the things that I ask people to do is at least finish your sentence. It's extremely important. So when they say to me, Cohen has no credibility, he's a convicted perjurer, well, that is true. I did plead guilty to what's called the 1001 violation, that I did not tell the truth to Congress. But it's important to finish the sentence, whereby what I did, what I had said, was done at the direction of, in coordination with, and for the benefit, it's extremely important, and for the benefit of Donald J. Trump. It's also important to note what this big lie is that they think is going to prevent me mm -hmm. from being the credible witness that I, that I clearly am and that I have shown myself to be. Today, by the way, is the five-year anniversary of the raid on my home, hotel, law office, and safety deposit box. So they need to finish the sentence whereby 
All right, they explain that the lie was the number of times that I told Congress that I spoke to Donald about the failed Trump Tower Moscow real estate project. I told them, at, again, the direction of in coordination with them for the benefit of Donald, I told them three times when the real answer was I spoke to him about it 10 times. And if anyone out there, <laughs> Fans or detractors think that that's going to stop me from being the credible witness that I am. They clearly don't understand how the process works. Mm. You know, um, Michael, <laughs> when I start my show, at the end of every open of my show, I say I'm Simone Sanders Towns and I have something to say. It was very clear to me that Michael Cohen had something to say today. Um, look, you, you make the point about folks <laughs> finishing their sentence and you talk about um, just the just the, the, the facts that you have provided to the DA's office. Um, in the statement of facts, it details audio recordings that surfaced in, I believe, 2018, of you actually discussing the Stormy Daniels payment with Donald Trump. Are, is the DA's office in possession of all of the recordings between you and Donald Trump? Is that why you're so confident? Okay, so that, yes, so Simone, that's actually uh, a little bit of misinformation there. It's one recording. I only recorded Donald one time. And I explained to the district attorney why it was that I had made that recording. Uh, and yes, they are in possession of that recording. But it is one time, and it's one recording from me. Before I let you go, uh, Michael, I, I guess I have to ask, because one of the other criticisms of you out there, I want to give you the opportunity to respond, is that you're actually on a revenge tour. Um, and folks could understand if you wanted revenge from Donald Trump because, you know, you didn't have uh, the alleged affair with uh, Stormy Daniels. He allegedly did. You or, did Karen, not. Or, Karen McDougal, or Karen McDougal. Would you like to respond? Are you? Are you or, on a revenge or Karen, tour? Or Karen McDougal. Uh, I did oh. not have an affair with her either. It is not on a revenge uh, tour. And as I've stated over and over again, the problem, though, is that those people who are the acolytes of Donald Trump, no matter what I say, they don't want to listen to it. This is not about revenge. This is about accountability. And for the first time in Donald's life, he is now confronted with accountability. They basically, D.A. Bragg, dropped accountability right on his lap. And he now has to contend with that. You know, I've also been very clear when I stated that um, I'm not, you know, people ask me all the time, oh, you must feel great, you know, about what is going on, what's happened. That's not true. I do not, because despite the fact that, again, it's about accountability, I'm not happy simply because it makes the United States, what's going on, the first president ever in the history of the United States to be, you know, indicted. This is not a good look for America. Well, it's not I guess a good I look say, for the presidency. I guess I would disagree with you there, Michael Cohen, because I guess I would say that I think the, a, a president being held accountable, going through the system like anyone else, I think it's good for democracy. And America is now joining the rest of the world. We could, we could well, do this all day, Michael, but they're telling me I, I mean, got to go. Yeah. They're, te they're telling me we got to <laughs> right. go. But you have to come back because there'll be more to discuss. This is going to be a long discovery process. I appreciate your time and happy holidays to you. And happy, ho and happy holidays to you and everyone. Thank you.